Global Imperialism Part 5. We're starting to get to the good parts. This is how the global map is looking. A few countries starting to get overrun with certain clubs. We started with 700 teams and only half remain. And the first team up to bat today in Part 5 is going to be... Sheffield Wednesday. The Owls, which way are they going to be hooting? They're going to be going west. Meaning it is going to be a Sheffield Derby. The Blades versus the Owls. Who's going to have bragging rights over the great city of Sheffield? United or Wednesday? It is going to be Sheffield United eliminating and imperializing their crosstown rivals. That's going to see Barry Bannan jumping across to the other side of Sheffield. And our first territory of part five has been claimed. We're headed back to Germany, FC Augsburg, and they're going to be heading southwest, which means if we get it in the center here, are they going to be? Yeah, they're going to be versing Sandhausen. Augsburg have been super impressive during this whole imperialism series. Is their run going to continue? Surely, against second division Sandhausen, surely they're going to get another win here. They do it in absolute style. 10 shots, 4 goals, and another area claim. Not the most crazy addition to their side, though. A new goalkeeper. Okay, Udinese. Which way will the team from the north of Italy be heading? They're going to be heading southwest, which means they're going to be facing the viviest club in world football. It's Venezia. Venice is on the line. Will Venezia survive or will Udinese be successful in imperializing them? The scoreline, it's off to a second leg. Damn, how did Udinese not win that? They dominated leg number two. We're not in Venice anymore. We are headed to Udinese and they're going to get the win this time. Once again, they dominate and they have claimed Venice as their own. Get those boats ready, lads. Oh, I didn't know Sheryshev was playing for Venezia. There you go. Udinese going to pick up the Russian midfielder, Denis Cherishev. Manchester City, I was just thinking about this before I was recording. I was like, Manchester City in every video I've done, I feel like they've come up really late. But here we go. They've been drawn. The blue half of Manchester, where will they be going? They will be going northwest, which means they are the team tasked with trying to stop Bolton's very impressive run. Personally, I'm hoping Bolton keeps the run going. We saw some absolutely monumental upsets in part four. Will this continue in part five? Freddie Woodman in goals here for Bolton after they claimed him from Preston. But Manchester City are a different animal compared to Preston. Come on, Bolton. Come on, Bolton. No, they had a chance to equalize as well in the 75th minute. Damn it, Haaland. Haaland has eliminated Bolton. Man City are going to get their hands on nobody spectacular. They get Woodman, Santos. They got Watt. And they got Ebanks, Landell. But it's more the fact that, I don't know, Bolton were kind of working towards something brilliant. UTA Arad are from the Romanian League, and they're going to be heading basically south. I mean, it was going to be an upgrade for them regardless. It was just a question of whether they were upgrading inside of Romania or whether they were going to make a, mo a move into like Serbia or one of those countries. But the recipient of their upgrade is going to be the defensive midfielder, Anton, going up to a 70. Fortuna Sittard, back to Netherlands for the first time today. Netherlands is in a bunch of countries where there is a chance, dependent on the draw, they could get close to him completely taken over today. Sittard though, there is more chances than not that they're going to find themselves going to another country, but they get the one chance where it's not, where they're going to be staying in the Netherlands. And that means they have the monumental task of taking on PSV Eindhoven. Which, to be fair, given PSV have the top half of Belgium, means they'll probably end up in another country if they win regardless. Well, they definitely will. PSV were genuinely all over it last episode, adding Toby Alderweireld and Ergen Kurtzu to their squad. Surely they're going to win this game. Surely you would say they're going to take down Fortuna Sittard. They do easily. They are putting together a Dutch league super team. And it is going to be Yilmaz, the Turkish striker, who is the latest addition. Selfishly, I'm kind of hoping that PSV and FC Utrecht 
end up facing each other. That would be huge. Gangwon FC from Korea and Gangwon are heading southwest. Or oh, is that FC Seoul or is that an upgrade? Okay, I need to get the I need to get the direction wheel out for this. It's gonna be FC Seoul. Let's go, lads. Selfishly, I'm really happy about that. This game is gonna be a belter because just like the Netherlands, Korea could easily be taken over today as well. I genuinely think that there's gonna be like a domino where it's just like, we went five parts where not many countries got taken over, but once one gets taken over, it's just gonna be country after country after country. And you guys are gonna be like, what is going on? This is insane. FC Seoul are one of Korea's most famous football teams, but are they gonna find themselves imperialized or will they move on? Here we go, Gangwon challenging them and Gangwon have failed. FC Seoul imperialized. That is actually huge for FC Seoul. They get Kim Day 1, 73 overall. That's huge. Austria is the next stop. I love how in today's episode, we've been jumping from country to country to country to country. They're gonna be heading north, like in between north and northwest, which means they're gonna be heading up into Germany, trying to take on Ingolstadt. Okay, Ingolstadt have been good, but can they survive the challenge of LASK LASK? They've both got wins under their belt, but it is LASK challenging Ingolstadt and trying to do a reverse World War II Austria trying to invade Germany. Here we go. Ingolstadt versus Lask, and it is Ingolstadt absolutely thumping them and entering Austrian territory. This is a great result for the third German division side. They're gonna get a 74 rated attacking midfielder in Zulj, and they're also gonna get Nuts, who was acquired from, uh, from uh, Lask. Alaska acquired him in one of their imperializations. Ingolstadt, the second team to officially enter the Austrian territory alongside Stuttgart. Actually, no, I lie because St. Gallen as well, they've entered it. Austria are getting attacked from every direction. AEK Athens, this is interesting. Okay, they're gonna find themselves going northwest, which means, because we're going from the logo, they're gonna, obviously they're gonna get themselves another upgrade regardless, but it means they're gonna get closer and closer to Pauk the two remaining Greek sides. That's gonna see Garcia though, getting another plus two upgrade, taking him now up to an 81. <laughs> you we've gone from AEK to AIK. We're off to Sweden, that's, that's gold. And the Swedish side are heading almost directly west. And I'm being serious when I say that's who they're playing. AIK with already one win to their name. Are they gonna make it a second here? AIK versus IK Sirius, and we're off to a second leg. Leg number two, here we go between the two Swedish sides. It is a winner there for AIK, who get their second result. But it will be the center half, Matteson, headed to AIK. Dundee United, here we go. Dundee will be heading, or Dundee United. I've been warned by Dundee United fans to not just call them Dundee, because that's like a massive sin, apparently. But they're going to be heading southwest, which means they're going to be getting themselves an upgrade here. I did see a comment saying last episode, we didn't get a single Scottish team, which is wild. But that's going to be another upgrade for Stephen Fletcher, who's now up to a 73. Off to Portugal for the first time today, Portimonense. The club has like the eagle next to the name, but they're going to be heading northwest, sorry, northeast, which means they're going to be entering the lower half of Spain. And the lower half of Spain is completely unclaimed territory. So that is now theirs. There's a real chance if they get a couple more draws, Draws go their way. They could just go all the way up through Spain undetected. But their highest rated player is their right back, Mufi, who goes up to a 75. Stade Brestois, France it is. No point even going to the wheel. There is only one way they can go, and that is against FC Lorient. FC Lorient are another club that have just been unbelievable. They got that Alvin Lafont guy in that starting 11 that they picked up. Are they going to get another scalping here? No, they are not! Stade Brestois forced into a corner, have just eliminated one of the high rises, I guess you could say, so far. Star Brestois, imperialized Lorient. So it's gonna be Alvin Lafont, Remain Fair, and where is this other guy? This guy here, Monceau, headed to Star Brestois. And all of a sudden, they've gone from being backed into a corner to taking all of this land. I'm getting whiplash from the amount of countries we've been jumping today. It's Saudi Arabia, Etifak. Where are you gonna be heading, Etifak? Where are you gonna be heading? They're gonna be heading east, which means, is that another country? Yeah, it is, Oman. 
Etifak are going to take over the country of Oman. That's massive for them. Oman is now Etifak. Their shot stopper is 75 rated Paulo Victor, who now goes up to a 77. Barcelona, hello. Love how Barcelona has been drawn like four or five times, but Real Madrid have been nowhere. Barcelona are going to be heading southeast, which means they're going to be trying to take the island of Mallorca. Of course, the rule is you can jump water if it's the same nation. Otherwise, Mallorca and Ibiza would never be able to get a game in this entire series. But Barcelona trying to take Mallorca. Both teams with an upgraded player. 80 rated Mafeo here for Mallorca and 93 rated Robert Lewandowski for Barcelona. Here we go. The scoreline is another win for Barcelona. They get more territory and they now get the 80 rated Mafeo, which again, I don't think is an upgrade for them. Like that, like that doesn't even matter for their squad because it's so good. FC Lugano in Switzerland. They want to be heading southwest almost, which means they're going to be trying to push into Italy. So if AC Monza is there and they've got this territory, that means this little dipper here is going to be that there, meaning they, oh, they're getting bold. They're versing AC Milan. Good luck to you, Lugano. This would be one of the great upsets if FC Lugano pulled this off. They do have their upgraded Stefan, who's up to a 78. But this AC Milan side is just absolutely unreal. The scoreline is going to be a win for AC Milan. I think we all saw that coming. Meaning that 78 rated Stefan goes to AC Milan. But I honestly don't know if he even makes the starting squad. I don't know if he even makes the bench. But AC Milan, despite having minimal territory in Italy, are going to find themselves now with a respectable chunk of Switzerland. That is... That's impressive. Northeast United back to India for the first time today. They're going to be heading south. Again, they're in an awesome position where they've got upgrades all around them. So that's going to see Filipotu up again. This time he's up plus four to a 70. Again, some people might get confused. He's only getting plus two this time, but he's already had one previous plus two upgrade. I didn't just magically give him a plus four upgrade out of thin air. Blackpool. Okay. I'm sorry, Blackpool. There's no point me spinning the wheel. You can only verse Manchester. Oh, this is... Please, Blackpool, come on, do a job. Championship side, Blackpool, waltzing into the Etihad here, trying to cause a massive upset. Please, Blackpool. Please, Blackpool, come on, do it for us. Oh, my God, they got... They got thumped. Man City, Alvarez getting a brace off the bench. Blackpool gone. And Manchester City are going to get themselves a 70 rated striker. I'm sure this guy's going to be starting ahead of Haaland and Alvarez. Union La Calera from Chile. Have we had a single Chilean side perform yet so far? But they're going to be heading west, kind of northwest, which means they're going to be taking on Everton. No, not the Toffees. Everton, Davinia Del Mar. I had to look at my cheat sheet for that one. Can I also just comment on how wild of a country Chile is. It is just like the lankiest country in the world. Chile is the Victor Wembanyama of countries. So as you all know by now, we're five parts into the series. We have to watch this game because they are Chilean. Everton in the box here. Everton in the box. Everton have themselves the lead. What is the La Catalica defense doing there? Or Calera. I'm sorry. I've stuffed up the name. I've, I'm good at that. Go. Shoot it. 2-0 for Everton. This defense is woeful. It's a great ball. Surely if they don't score here, you've got to set yourself up for a goal here. He, he, he stuffed that up royally. Regardless though, it's not going to matter because Union La, 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 Union La Calera were woeful. And it made sense why. Their side is terrible. Their highest rated player is 69 rated center half. So that means Everton are going to get a 69 rated center half. Nashville. Okay, back to the MLS. Nashville will find themselves heading east, kind of southeast, which means it's going to be, that is such a cool image, but it is going to be yellow versus blue. Reminds me of the Parramatta Eels. Regardless though, it's Nashville trying to imperialize Charlotte, North Carolina. Here we go. We're at the Carolina Panthers Stadium. The Bank of America Stadium, Charlotte FC versus Nashville Soccer Club. Who is surviving? Nashville 
Walk in there and take them down. Massive. Catch this man at Jason Aladdin's on Broadway in Nashville. It's going to be Westwood heading to Nashville. Hurricane from Argentina. We're off to Argentina for the first time today. They are going to be heading north, which means they're going to be taking on Newell's Old Boys, a club that we have seen quite often in this series. Newell's looking to continue their run. Here we go. An all Argentinian affair. Not many clubs remain in that country as well. And Newell's have been taken over. Morello, with seven minutes of magic, has eliminated Newell's old boys. And Hurricane have just taken a lot of land. Hurricane are going to get themselves Lima, Quintana, and they're going to get Dita. So a lot of center halves. They've basically got themselves a new backline. Look at that. We're going to go from one shade of red to another. Newell's taken over. But lads, if you are enjoying this global imperialism series and you're not already subscribed, make sure you scorpion kick that subscribe button down below. We're on the grind, on the push towards 500,000 subscribers. So help us get there. And if you're already subscribed, I don't know, go tell a mate or something. Help us get there. Pv Ustend, are they, are they Belgian? Yeah, they are Belgian. They're tucked right in that top left-hand corner. A lot of quality sides around them. <laughs> They've basically said, I don't care about Belgium. Get us out of here. Because they're heading west. It means they're going to be moving to the top of France, which I believe means they are right around here which is going to be RC Lens. Neither of these sides have been involved so far. One of them is going to go out on their first time of asking. And one of them is going to actually invade another country. Which country is getting invaded? France or Belgium? It is going to be Belgium getting invaded. RC Lens imperializing KV Usten. And RC Lens are going to get themselves a 73 rated defensive midfielder in the process. Belgium is another country, kind of like Switzerland, where they're just getting invaded from every corner. You've got France from the left, PSV from the north, and then my, like Germany, Mines and Cologne from the south and the southeast. SD Ponferradina, are they Spanish? Yeah, they are. Here they are up here. They're going to be headed west, almost northwest, but west, which means just by the skin of their teeth, they're going to find themselves facing Real Oviedo. Real Oviedo already have some decent scalps next to their name. Are they going to add another as they verse another second division side? Yes, they do. They're going to get themselves a new goalkeeper. More land for them as well. Fair play. Spain is getting smaller and smaller in terms of numbers. Orlando City. They're going to be heading south. I already know what that is. It is going to be a derby here to take control of Florida. Orlando City versus into Miami. South Beach versus Disney World. David Beckham versus Kaka. Who is going to come out victorious in this game of Florida teams? It is going to be Orlando City, convincingly. A massive, massive addition here for Orlando City. They get Yosef Martinez. Martinez is headed to Orlando. Congratulations, Orlando. You now control Florida. Stade Rene, here we go. Okay, back to France. They are heading southeast, which means they're going to be taking on Stade Brestois. We have seen how good Stade Brestois have been during this imperialism series, but this is a massive challenge for them. Stade Rene versus Stade Brestois. Only one will survive, and we're going to go to a second leg to find out. All right, leg number two. Stade Rene, the home team for this one. And it is going to be a third leg. All right, third leg. Here we go again. And it is going to be Stade Brestois. Wow. I was not expecting that. But Stade Brestois have again just solidified themselves as maybe a serious dark horse to take over France. There we go. They picked themselves an upgrade on the left wing spot. Terrier is joining. Burton Albion, we're back to England. And Burton Albion are heading north, almost northeast. Which means they're going to be versing Liverpool. Come on, Burton Albion. Give us the upset. Every neutral one. So much on the line here. I completely forgot that Liverpool picked themselves up. Harry Kane, that 86 Madison. They've got Kaylor Navas on the bench. But Burton Albion, of course, have Ruben Neves. They've already beaten one Premier League club in this imperialism. Please, Burton Albion. Please, Ruben Neves. Please beat Liverpool. No! Oh, Liverpool's run 
continued. So Liverpool's at a point right now where they've already picked up so many players that their squad numbers are really tight. And this is something I did see some comments about in previous episodes that we would run into. I've seen some of the comments you guys, like some suggestions you've made. And the one I like the most is when a team like Liverpool have already acquired like 10, 15 players from other clubs, if they lose, they're going to have to give just their best 11 highest rated eligible players across. So players like McDonald and stuff that they've picked up from random clubs and Bayatic aren't going to mean much. Which is why in this case, I'm only going to give them Ruben Neves. There we go. It's more land for Liverpool. Fair play to Burton Albion. A big scalp taking out Wolves, but their run has come to an end. Headed back to Spain. Time to see these nuts. The D's are going to be heading east, meaning it is a southern Spanish affair here. Sadiz trying to imperialize Almeria. So here we go. This is a big game. Two evenly matched Spanish top flight teams. Almeria versus Sadiz. Who is going to survive? It is going to be Almeria with another win next to their name. That's their third win now. Meaning they're going to get themselves an 80 rated goalkeeper. That is huge. Brick by brick. Almeria just gets stronger and stronger. I mean, that's the strategy I've kind of been harping on about in this, in this series. Like, if you're a team that's not, like, already star-studded, if you can get wins that are just a little bit better and better every single time, stack those up, and you're going to be able to take on the big boys eventually. And to be fair, Almeria are starting to get close to one of the big boys of Spanish football. Off to Denmark. They're going to be heading west, almost southwest, which means Odensa are going to get themselves an upgrade here. The geography of Denmark is wild to me. Like, I don't know. It's just a cool country, but it's the first upgrade in a hot minute. Kadri is up to a 71. Zaragoza, let's go. We've spent a lot of time in Spain today. Zaragoza will be heading northeast, which is going to set up a massive opportunity. They're taking on Barcelona. Come on, Zaragoza, please, please, please. Zaragoza walking into the Camp Nou here trying to take down the juggernaut of Barcelona. Of course, they have that 93 rated Robert Lewandowski. Barcelona making moves throughout Europe. But will it be thwarted by Real Zaragoza? The scoreline, no, it is not. Oh, I was trying to build you up, Zaragoza. Luckily, though, it's again another rather irrelevant addition to the side. And the one thing I like is that Barcelona now find themselves just that little bit closer towards an El Clasico. It's the other Barcelona, the Ecuadorian Barcelona. Barcelona Soccer Club are going to find themselves going east, which means they are going to get themselves an upgrade. There is so many unclaimed areas here in Ecuador. It's wild. Which is going to see their attacking midfielder and captain Diaz going up to a 77. This guy could, like, seriously, if they get these upgrades, he could be a serious talent. Napoli, we're off to Italy. And they're going to find themselves going northwest. Napoli have been one of the big movers in this video. And they're going to get another upgrade here to Oshaman as they claim this unclaimed territory here. That now means Victor Oshaman goes up to an 88 overall. God damn. Villarreal's B team. They're going to find themselves going basically south. God damn it. I was kind of hoping they'd be versing... The Villarreal main team, but they've got a huge challenge now as they face Valencia. Imagine the scenes if Villarreal's B team wins here and they end up just like continuously going south in the whole video and the main team keeps winning and goes north and they end up bursting each other for global imperialism. That would be... That would be kind of mental. Regardless though, here we go. Valencia against Villarreal's B team. And it is going to be Valencia getting the come from behind win. So it is the 71 rated striker, Nino, headed to Valencia. Perth glory. Okay. I was honestly thinking, I'm like, I have not seen an A-League team in a hot minute. Hot, hot minute. It's Perth glory. So stunned by the fact there's an Australian team playing that I can't even speak English. But there is no point even spinning the direction wheel because they can only verse Adelaide United. So here we go. A huge game because the winner will keep or get the 77 rated Craig Goodwin from Adelaide United. Here we go. Adelaide United, the Reds versus the Glory. And the scoreline is a 3-0 demolition job by the Perth Glory. Wow. Okay. The Perth Glory are going to gain. They're going to keep Perth. 
Western Australia. They're going to get South Australia and the Northern Territory. And Craig Goodwin now plays for the glory. That is massive. The majority of Australia is now Perth glory. I love how poor old, well, I don't love it, but poor old Wellington have the whole of New Zealand they can claim and they haven't even been drawn once. Crystal Palace, right now at the time of recording, I just got a notification on my phone that they conceded to Arsenal to make it 4-1. And now we're going to see if they can turn their fortunes around in global imperialism. Alice are going to be heading west, sorry, east, which as we get into the very busy part of England in London, they're going to be heading east, meaning they're taking on Gillingham. So here we go. This would be a massive scalp if Gillingham can get a result here. Crystal Palace, are they going to move east? They are. They're going to make it a 4-2 win. Nothing too crazy in terms of upgrades, but I'm just sure Crystal Palace are happy to be off the mark. We're staying in England. We're off to see West Brom. I think if they go north, West Brom will be versing Liverpool. Oh, is that going to be Liverpool? No, because if we're going from the middle, it's only just, but it's going to be Aston Villa. A Midlands derby here between Villa and the Baggies. Who's going to get bragging rights? In the Midlands, it is going to be Aston Villa. It's a decent upgrade that I suppose. Jed Wallace heading to Villa Park. We are staying in England. Third game in a row. Exeter City will be heading east, slightly south, which I think that's just going to get them. It's only just going to touch this area here. And they versus Bournemouth. Cherry's defending home turf here. Exeter City trying to walk in and imperialize their southern neighbors. The scoreline is going to be... They do it successfully! Oh my god. Bournemouth, despite dominating somewhat in terms of the statistics, have been imperialized by Exeter City. That is a massive scale. It's going to be a massive, massive upgrade for their defense. They're going to add Norbeto Nato, the goalkeeper, to their squad. That is... That is massive. Yeah, look, I was not expecting that. That is fair play to them. RB Leipzig. Okay, another big sort of team that hasn't been drawn yet. RB Leipzig are going to find themselves heading northwest, which means they're going to be taking on lower league side FSV Zwickau. Zwickau need their 69 rated goalkeeper Brinkies to do the business for them. Their upgraded goalkeeper Leipzig versus Zwickau. Come on, Zwickau, cause an upset. Cause an upset. No, they don't. Oh, Leipzig get the win. Which means Zwinkies and Cruz are the men they picked up when they last won are both headed to Leipzig. Always ready. I think they're from... Bol I don't think we've been to the Bolivian League for this entire series, but always ready are up. And they're going to be heading directly south, which means they're going to be taking on the strongest. Who's going to... Is it the strongest going to win or will always ready live up to their name? One thing is for certain though, Bolivian football has some pretty cool club names. And as always for two South American teams, we will be watching this one. Always ready in the box here. Always ready, are ready and they take the lead early in this one. Here we go, can they equalize? They play it beautifully and they have picked apart the always ready defense and the strongest make it one all. Here we go. In the box, they've laid it wide. Shoot it. Square it. Shoot. It's 2-1. They've come from behind. Oh, it's a great run. They're going to play it through and it's 2 all again. What a start to the second half for always ready. Is there time for a late winner here? Is there time? Shoot it. Oh, what a save with the death. Always ready. Trying to get that 90th minute winner. It's going to be headed away. And the referee is surely going to blow that one full time. We are off to penalties. So apparently with these South American games, we can't go straight to penalties because it's a cup final. So we've got extra time. Oh, are they going to get the go ahead goal? They do. Always ready. Take the lead in extra time. It's Wilfred Boney. I didn't realize Wilfred Boney was playing for them. The strongest. Can they equalize? It's Persadinho. They're going to do it. This game is absolutely insane. And there we go. We are off to penalties after all. This has been an insane game here in Bolivia. And it's going to be a penalty save to start things off. Now Wilfred Boney. I don't know where his hair's gone, but he's putting that one in the back of the net. Jada versus Mosquera. And it's another save. These penalty takers from the strongest are having a nightmare Always ready with a massive lead here. Donosos, the man that scored the equalizer. It's another save. Oh my God, this could be the game. This could be the game. Always ready. Might be able to take over. 
this section of Bolivia, which they do. What a terrible penalty shootout, but what an insane game of football. That now means always ready are gonna get themselves a 70 rated center midfield. Okay, off to Portugal we go, it's FC Porto. FC Porto will be heading east, which luckily for them is going to be an upgrade, which means the right midfielder, Otavio, is gonna get himself upgraded to an 84. Plymouth Argyle, we don't need to be spinning the wheel for this one, we know they're gonna be playing XM. City. They are both League One sides, but Exeter City with the massive advantage of Norbeto Nato in between the sticks for them. The scoreline here is going to be heading to a second leg. I mean, Nato can keep them out of the goal, but they can't be, he can't be scoring them. So the second leg is going to be a win for Plymouth Argyle. That's mental. Even with an 80 rated keeper, Exeter City concede two goals. So fair play to Plymouth Argyle. They're going to get themselves an 80 rated goalkeeper and a 67 rated striker. Okay, we're off to Saudi Arabia. It's Al Fateh. And they're going to find themselves heading northwest. Right, I need to get the direction wheel out here because I don't know if they're facing Al Fire or Al Adala. Northwest is literally the corner, but I think it just goes here, meaning they're going to be facing Al Adala. My Australian mind keeps me going, Al Adala, if you know, you know. Some pretty big names in both these teams, but Christian Teo playing left winger there for Al Fateh. Here we go. Who's going to get the win in this matchup? It is going to be Al Fateh. Christian Taylor getting himself, they missed, they had a man sent off and still came back and won. That is wild. So Al Fateh are going to sign themselves, are going to imperialize Al Adala and get themselves Gonzalez. A club that we've seen before, but it is Tyrez from Argentina. And Tyrez will be heading directly east. That's about as east as you can get. Oh, this is a big one. This is a big one. They're the side that took down Newell's. It's going to be Hurricane, is it? Yeah, Hurricane. Two quality teams here, but only one will survive. Who's going to gain a large chunk of Argentina? Tyrez or Huracan? It is going to be Tyrez with a comeback win. 3-1. So Tyrez with four additions to the side here. They get Lima. They're going to get Garcia. They're going to get Dita. And they're going to get Quintana. I keep looking at this screen here because this is where I have my spreadsheet. I'm just making sure I've got everybody. Okay, off to Romania. It is CFR Cluj. So Cluj are going to find themselves going basically south. Which means it is going to be a Cluj derby. I'm probably pronunciating that city name wrong. But it's going to be CFR Cluj versus Universitatia. It's the university. So here we go. Two Romanian teams doing battle. Who's going to get themselves a big result here and move on? It is going to be the University of Cluj eliminating, I guess, their bigger brother. That is a... They only had four shots and got themselves three goals compared to seven. That is a massive upset. And it's going to be... I can't believe this guy's... I don't mean to diss him. Like, I'm not trying to be a dickhead, but... Simone Scuffe was like a wonder kid back in the day. 71 rated now playing in the Romanian league. He jumps to the other side of Cluj. Oh my God. Oh my God. I was wondering when this was going to happen. We have not seen PSG, but that's going to change. PSG are going to be heading northeast, which means they're going to be taking on Quevely, a side that has been putting together a nice little run here in France. PSG really do not have much to gain from this, but they have everything to lose. Come on, Quevely. Shock the French and the footballing world. Please, 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 no. I saw the two and my heart skipped a beat, but PSG get off the mark. And in the process, they're going to get Kakuda, Bethermia, and Sidibe. God damn, PSG have just been stuck in Paris and they're going to immediately take so well. Not that, not, not Lens, not Lens' territory. But they now get all of this land. Darmstadt, back to Germany. They're going to be heading northwest, which means they're taking on Saarbrücken, who of course have moved in to... Wait, let me check this because I got it wrong last time. They have Luxembourg. I think I called it Liechtenstein last time. My bad. Saarbrücken have been getting the job done so far, but... They step up a division here, taking on second division Darmstadt. Who will move on? Who will be imperialized? We're going to go to a second leg. How is there zero goals when they have six shots and Darmstadt have seven? That's mental. All right, leg number two. 
Here we go. The score line is a win for Darmstadt, meaning the upgraded bats, even though they like it won't matter, but you'll see why. But they're gonna get him. They're also gonna get Andreas Luth, who Saarbrücken picked up last time. Of course, he's higher rated than bat. They're gonna get a center midfielder here in Richard Newdecker. Saarbrücken had a respectable run, but it is time to go, and it is also time to get Darmstadt on the global map. It might only be a small presence, but they're on the map regardless. Hold the phones, Darmstadt also get Ivan Priatien. Okay, we are headed to Italy. It is Sudatrol. Direction are they gonna be heading? They're gonna be heading directly south, which means they're gonna be taking on first division side Cremonese. Cremonese, I don't know where I find the extra N from, but Cremonese. On paper, this should be a win all day here for Cremonese, but can Sudatrol, Sudatrol, why don't I get it back to front? Sudatrol, can they pull something out of nothing here. No, they can't. They have been imperialized. I don't think this is gonna mean much here for Cremonese, but it's still not terrible. 73 rated striker. Barrow, oh, this is big pressure. This is big, big, big pressure. Barrow are heading directly north, which means the winners of our UK imperialism video are gonna be versing Carlisle United. This would be a massive letdown for Barrow. In the UK imperialism video, they beat Chelsea on their first game. Can they beat Carlisle United here? This is a huge one. And the winner is going to be Carlisle United. Barrow, the winners of the UK imperialism video cannot defend not only their UK crown, but they can't even defend their regional crown. They are eliminated, which is gonna see the 65 rated right midfielder Whitfield headed to Carla. Paul AFC Barrow got yay, cause they are a one hit wonder. Kaiser Spore, I think that's a Turkish club. Kaiser Spore are gonna find themselves going south, kinda southwest, but mostly south, which means they're gonna be taking on Adana Demispor. Both these teams with some very remember rememberable names. I can't talk English today. Stambouli though, the captain for Adana Demispor. Svensson there at right back. Who is going to continue on? It is going to be Adana Demispor. Belhanda, very famous name. Gokhan Inler as well on the bench. They're going to get the win over Kaiserspor, which is going to see Adana Demispor heading further north and getting Gavranovic in the process. Okay, we're off to Scotland. Hibs, you're up. Hibs are going to be heading to the west, which means they're going to be going, yeah, they're going to be taking on Kilmanov. A very controversial name because apparently the way I say it is just, offensive. I saw someone leave a comment the other day which had me on the floor. They said, the way I say Kilmanok sounds like I'm saying a spell out of Harry Potter. If you, if whoever commented that is watching the video, that made my day, that was gold. So here we go, a couple of upgrades on each of these teams, but who is going to survive? The scoreline is going to be heading to a second leg. Second leg, we're in Edinburgh. Hibbs versus Kilmarnock or Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock, I cast a spell, but it's going to be Hibbs getting the win there. Cadden and Stevenson getting the job done, which means Hibbs picks up the upgraded Taylor along with a very respectable part of Scotland. The path for any Scottish club to try entering the UK or try entering England, I should say, is through Hibs now. Okay, Mulder, here we go. They're gonna be heading southeast, sorry, southwest. Means, are they gonna touch? No, I think they're gonna go straight through here and take on Alisson. Okay, Mulder versus Alisson's. Who is gonna be imperialized and who is gonna continue on this global domination path? It is gonna be Mulder. Another win next to their name, huge. Mulder are just getting goalkeeper after goalkeeper. And just like Hibs in Scotland, now the path for any team to go north or south in Norway is through Mulder. And to be fair to Christian Sund here, the path for them to go anywhere is through Mulder. Sampdoria, hello again, it has been a while. So Sampdoria are gonna be heading west, slightly north of west, which means they're gonna be going back into France. This will be interesting. So we're gonna spin the wheel again, knowing that this now depends on their French positioning. Though it is gonna be southwest, meaning they've got Nîmes Olympic. Sampdoria looking to get another win. They've had an incredible series so far. Is the streak gonna continue? Yes, it will. And they do it in convincing fashion. Sampdoria 
I applaud you guys. To be fair, this isn't the most spectacular addition to their side, a 70 rated left midfielder, but it's the fact they now get another territory in France to their name is spectacular. And it also sets them up potentially in the future for a matchup with Barcelona. And the exciting thing about that would be the winner of a potential Sampdoria versus Barcelona game would mean at this stage, that would be the first team to have a presence in three countries because the winner of that game would be in France, Italy, and Spain. All right, off to Poland, it's Widzu Lodz. And Widzu Lodz are gonna be heading southwest, meaning they're only just gonna be taking on Lubin if they kept going through. Actually, no, I'm gonna get the direction wheel out. Yes, they come straight through. I'm, I'm not keeping it centered, but I actually think I'm glad I got that out because it's gonna be Medez Legnica or whatever it's called. I think it's gonna be them. It's an all Polish affair. Who's gonna continue their journey here? Lodz is going to be a second leg. Big second leg coming up here. Who is it gonna be? Do or die game and it's with Zoo Lodz at the death, 74th minute, getting more land here in Poland. And they're gonna get themselves a new shot stopper added to the club. Millwall, Millwall. All right, Millwall. What direction are you heading this time? You're gonna be heading north, east. Or oh, is it gonna be Chelsea or West Ham? I think it's Chelsea as much as I've wanted to be West Ham. I don't think we're east enough. Yeah, that's just, that's like by a fraction, by a bloody pixel, it's Chelsea. If Millwall could go into Stamford Bridge and imperialize them, that would, that'd make me a very happy man. Come on, Millwall, please get the job done. Do it for Zerka, do it for Footwiz Jamodo, no! Oh, it's Chelsea. Chelsea, another bigger club. Their first game, it's a win. It might not mean much for Chelsea, but they're gonna be getting themselves Fleming and they're also gonna get, where is he? Here he is, Adji Boy. They're both heading to Stamford Bridge. Okay, we're off to, have we been to Ireland in today's episode? So Derry City are gonna be heading west, which is gonna be a game here. It's gonna be Derry City versus Finn Harps. So here we go, headed up north for this game. Who is gonna survive out of the two Irish league sides? It is gonna be Derry City successfully imperializing Finha. Oh yeah, it's the upgrade Derry City were dreaming about. 61 rated McCohen, McCowan. Whoever ends up winning Ireland is gonna get so many upgrades. Okay, we're headed to Sweden, it's AIK. They're gonna find themselves going Northwest, which is gonna see them getting an upgrade. If we're going from the center of the logo, then they'll take this area here. So it's gonna be their goalkeeper Nordfeld going from a 72 to a 74. Staying in that re region as we're off to Switzerland. To be fair, they're not really the same region as Sweden. They just have similar names, which is a stupid comment for me to make, but they're gonna be heading west, kind of southwest, which means we have a affair here, a clash between Zurich and Grasshopper Club. It is a battle of the two Zurich clubs here, but only one will survive. Will it be Grasshopper or FC Zurich? It is FC Zurich getting an 88th minute winner, which means FC Zurich are getting this striker, Shetin, and they're also getting Degustu, who Grasshopper Club got from Winterfell, I believe it was. And they also now control Zurich. Ooh, ooh, okay, okay, it's Palk. They're gonna be going south, which I mean, it's hard because obviously if there's Greek viewers watching, you would know that these are probably gonna be different regions, but for simplicity's sake, because there is a million little islands, I think it's, fair to give like Pauk for going south, give them like these little islands here and just count that as one. You know what, I'll split them up. So they're gonna take these islands here. That's gonna be a different region there. But that's gonna see Zivkovic getting another plus two upgrade. This time he's up to an 80 overall. And the exciting thing is, we're now only Pauk getting drawn and having to go west again, or AK, AEK Athens getting drawn and having to go east away from Greece being settled. We are headed to Ecuador. It's Independiente. And they're going to be heading north, kind of, basically north, which means they have a matchup here. We're going to see an all Ecuadorian clash against Catalica. Some of the South American games we have seen so far have been absolute belters. Let's see if this one can live up to those expectations. Here we go. Independiente in behind. They're squared it. Is it going to be an early goal? It is. They have picked them apart and Catalica find themselves behind early on here. Penalty? Penalty! 
It is a penalty here, an opportunity for Catalika to respond. Here we go. Martinez Boya is going to get his penalty saved. That is so clutch. Oh, chested. Shot. What a goal there. Catalika do get their equalizer. Oh, 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 this game is insane. This game is back to back. It's just end to end and Independiente in front again. Catalika, it's 2 all. This game is crazy. Catalika have just driven straight through them. There is no defense in this game, and Catalika have the lead. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is Catalika defeating Independiente in another insane game. So Catalika are going to get themselves a 75-rated center defensive midfielder here. We're going to be staying in South America. It is Atletico Tucumán. They're going to find themselves going east, kind of southeast. Where are they? Are they hiding up here in Argentina? But that's going to be a game for them. They're going to be taking on Estoro, I believe it is. I'm a dumbass. Their name is Central Cordoba. But here we go. Central Cordoba trying to defend homeland against Atletico Tucumán, who is going to survive here in Argentina. We're going to go to a second leg. Y'all know I hate third legs. So let's see if this one can be settled here and now. Nope. Thanks, guys. I hope you both get eliminated eventually. Here we go. Leg number three between Cordoba and Tucumán. And it's a four. Is this the first time in series history we're off to a fourth leg? I'm not making any comments about this one. Fourth leg. Here we go. We're off to a fifth leg. Nah. We're going to a fifth leg. This is actually cooked. This is cooked. I cannot believe I'm saying this. Fifth leg. Here we go. What is going on? What is... We're going to a sixth leg. We are going... Are you guys... Am, am I tripping out? We are going to a sixth leg. If you were a betting man, I'd be throwing my life savings on another draw here. Sixth leg. Sixth leg. Oh, finally, we get a winner. I was going to say, if we went to a seventh leg, that would I would have just eliminated both of them. Atletico Tucumán have taken down Central Cordoba in six legs. That is a monumental pickup here for Tucumán. They get a 77-rated striker in Luis Miguel Rodriguez. My man is 38 years old. God damn. Are we st San Lorenzo, are they Argentinian? Yes, they are. We are staying in Argentina. And they're going to be heading northeast, which means they're going to be taking on Banfield here. The two diagonal teams, they're taking on Banfield. Let's see if they can get this one settled in one leg. It's Banfield trying to defend home turf as San Lorenzo look to imperialize them and... Oh my god, it's going to happen again, isn't it? Second leg, San Lorenzo, the home team here. Come on, get a winner. Okay, it's San Lorenzo. We don't go to six legs again. San Lorenzo take down Banfield. A nice addition here for San Lorenzo. They're going to get 75 rated Alleman into their side. Atletico Madrid. I thought we would never see the day, but we've got a team out of Madrid being drawn. So Atletico will be heading west, which means they have a game here against Deportivo Lagane. I find it wild how this is the first time any team from Madrid has been played. We're five parts into this series, and this is the first Madrid matchup, and it's a potential banana peel here for Atletico Madrid. Are they going to get themselves onto the next stage? Yes, they do. Antoine Griezmann imperializes Leganes. And I'm sure Atletico Madrid is stoked to get a 73 rated right back as their first edition. That now sets things up very nicely for a potential Madrid derby later down the line, which will probably be in about another 250 spins given how long it's taken us to get one Madrid team playing. Oh my God. Oh my God. I have, I can promise you guys, I might include just the raw footage. Real Madrid are the next spin. Nah, FIFA gods, my computer's listening. The FBI is literally in my computer right now listening to me to make that happen. Real Madrid. They're going south. They're going south. Please tell me that's going to be Atletico Madrid. That is. I was worried it might be a little bit to the east and it might have resulted in this area being upgraded, but it's going to be a Madrid derby. Literally the second game, like right after we called it. It's a Madrid derby. No ifs, buts, or maybes. We have to watch this game because a massive club in Spanish football is about to get imperialized. Tony Cruz swings that one in to Benzema. Benzema with the header. And Kareem the Dream Benzema, the man right there behind me, has given Real Madrid an early lead. 
Benzema, Benzema, holy crap. Kareem Benzema with a missile getting it past All Black and doubling Real Madrid's advantage. Griezmann driving through here, Griezmann. Back yourself, Griezmann's gone straight through them and it is game on here at the Metropolitano. Oh, big tackle there from Griezmann. He goes in the box and it's off the crossbar. Oh, Rodrigo to pull off the crossbar. But there it is, despite a late push, Real Madrid have imperialized Atletico, which means Jan Oblak is headed to the Santiago Bernabeu, which is wild. Their, their goalkeeper is Courtois, and now their backup is Oblak. <laughs> Real Madrid's also gonna get Nyon, which I'm sure they're very excited about. It took the teams from Madrid a while to show up, but my God, they have made an impact. Okay, we're heading across to France, it's Khan. So they're gonna be going southeast. So diagonally of them, is that gonna be Angers or HAC? I think, yeah, that's gonna be HAC. What's their name, Lahav? Yeah, Lahav AC. It's gonna be them. Two sides from the second division in France, both very evenly rated. This game could go either way. Which way? Will it go? It is going to be a dominant victory there for Khan. My God. So they're gonna get El Hajam here, the 72 rated right back. Nothing to go wild about, but still a handy addition, which takes them from two and a half star to three star. Khan are gonna find themselves though on the doorstep of PSG. It's been a while since we've been in Korea, but it is Yonbuk Hyundai. So Yonbuk are gonna be heading northeast. Oh, is that gonna be, I think they might, are they gonna go through here? Okay, I need to get this wheel out. Oh, I think it's just gonna be an upgrade. I was I was wondering whether they're gonna get to take on Ulsan Hyundai, but Yonbuk Hyundai are gonna get themselves an upgrade and a lot of Central Asia, a lot of Central Korea, I should say. And that's gonna result in another upgrade here for Ling Chang Min, who goes up to a 76 overall. Going back to Spain, we can't we can't get rid of Spain today. They're gonna be going Southwest. Oh, is this gonna be an upgrade or is it gonna be Valencia? So we go from here, Southwest, it's just Valencia. Valencia have already conquered Villarreal's B team, but can they conquer their senior team? This should be a belter of a game here, two La Liga sides, and it's gonna be Villarreal getting the win and getting revenge for their B side, which ironically means they're gonna get Nino back from their B team. <laughs> and they're also gonna add Jose Gaia to their backline. Not a bad pickup at all. Wolfsburg AC, Austria. They're gonna find themselves going Southeast. Okay, they're going into a different country if they're going Southeast. So they sit somewhere around here in Austria is there any, there's no Slovenian teams in FIFA, so they're gonna claim Slovenia as their own. That's huge there for Wolfsberger, claiming the Republic of Slovenia. Europe slowly starting to fill up a little bit, but that's gonna see the center half Baumgartner going up to a 72. Juventus, hello, that's a juggernaut. Where are you gonna be heading, Juve? Juve's gonna be heading north, slightly to the east. All right, so that's gonna see them going into a new country, which is gonna be Switzerland. Oh shit, so that's where like Juventus are kind of sitting here normally northeast of their logo i think it's gonna be ac milan like that's northeast there which would be that there and then if you go northeast of that that's ac milan if i'm not tweaking a massive game here both in italian and now swiss football AC Milan versus Juventus, the 88 rated Chesney, which my camera's blocking on the line along with brozovic there's some big talents here Who's gonna survive? It is going to be Juventus via Chiesa getting the win in the 87th minute. Juventus are gonna get another quality keeper. They've got two quality keepers now, Mike Magnan headed there. And they're also gonna get Stefan, who was another player AC Milan picked up. So not only do Juventus get this area of Italy, they're also gonna get a fair majority, like a Decent chunk here of Switzerland. Sporting, we're headed to Portugal. Sporting's gonna be heading east. Oh, if I had put their logo just a little bit higher to begin with, they would be taking on Benfica, but instead they're taking on Casapia. Man, if you're Casapia, this is a brutal introduction. If there's any Casapia fans watching right now, I'm sorry that you've waited for like five parts in your first games against Sporting, but let's see if you can pull off a massive upset here in Portuguese football. Oh, they almost do. But Pedro Gonçalves gets himself a brace and helps Sporting imperialize Casapia. And in the process, it's going to be the 75 rated goalkeeper, Batista, 
He's gonna be heading to Sporting. Wonder if he'll do a Batista bomb. Okay, back to Germany we go. It's Mines. Mines have been very busy so far. Where are they heading now? They're gonna be heading north east. Oh, it's not diagonal enough to be Borussia Dortmund. I think it's going to be Darmstadt. I can confirm whoever wins this game will be the first team in this global imperialism series to have a presence in three countries. There's also a lot of talent on the line. Both of these teams have been busy. This game is underratedly important and we're going to be going to a second leg. Here we go. Second leg in Mines. Who's going to get some big territory? We're off to a third. Mines are going to come out here in the third leg and get a comprehensive win, although they were similar in stats. And Darmstadt, although it was pretty similar possession, but Mines have imperialized Darmstadt. So players they're collecting from Darmstadt are Luther, Priata and Nudecker, and then also Patrick Pfeiffer. So Mines taking Darmstadt's part of Germany, but they are now also getting Luxembourg. Altai, this is the team from the UAE, isn't it? No, it's not. That's Altai there. I was thinking of Al Al. But they're going to be heading southeast, which means they're going to be having Al Hazem. Although are they? Yeah, I think they're just Al Hazem. Turns out Al Hazem aren't in the game. They're in the first division, but they haven't been updated and imported into FIFA. Cheers. Since this is Al Fire's territory, they share the territory with Al Fire. I'm just going to give that territory to them, but no upgrade, no upgrade. But we've gone back and spun to make things fair, and they're going to be going east, which is going to mean they're going to be just facing Al Fire anyways. Al Tai do have the 75 rated Sayud upgrade in there. Meanwhile, Al Fire, they have got a few players they've picked up. They picked up Matria from a previous team, but who's going to survive here in Saudi Arabia? It is going to be Al Fire eliminating Altai and getting Sayud in the process. Things could get really interesting though for Al Fire because if they happen to get themselves drawn and end up claiming this territory, then they'll automatically unlock two more upgrades. Or if you're Al Fati and you end up versing Al Fire and you take them down or either team takes them down, then all three of these upgrades get unlocked. It's it's getting interesting in the Saudi League. Back to Portugal again with FC Vizela. Where are FC Vizela going to be heading? They're going to be heading southeast, which means they're going to be taking on GDC. Both three-star rated. This could be a very, very close matchup here. Who's going to come away with the bickies? We're going to be going to a second leg. And honestly, I'm not surprised. All right, second leg. Are we going to be going to a third leg? Please not. Please not. Okay, it's GD Chavez. Despite having just two shots, getting the victory there over FC Vizela and imperializing, which is going to send the 74 rated center midfielder Samu to GD Chavez. Okay, off to Italy we go. Udinese, they've already got one win under their belt. Can they add to it? Udinese are going to be heading directly north, which is going to be a new country, which is going to be Austria. Okay, so they're sitting around there. If they went if they went east, they would have had to take on Wolfsburg AC. But I think it means I'm having a tough time kind of matching up the two landscapes. I think that little dip there where Stuttgart is, is there. So then if Citadel is there, then that's the empty zone. So I think they're going to be taking on Austria Klagenfurt. If Udinese pull this off, they're going to be the fourth bloody separate nation to enter Austria. Austria is getting destroyed from every direction. But here we go away in Austria. And that is exactly what they're going to do. Udinese dominate and now entering Austria. The player doesn't really matter. It's this guy here, Pink. But visually, that is a massive, massive addition here for Udinese. Austria has, what, they've got St. Gallen from Switzerland. They've got Stuttgart coming down from here from Germany. Another German club in Ingolstadt. So, Italy is the third nation to enter Austria. Poor Austria loose now over here in the corner are just completely surrounded. Estoril Prior. There's no point even going to the wheel. They can only take on Sporting. Sporting looking to get one step closer to Portuguese domination here. Can Estoril step up and protect and overtake? I mean, they are the challenger after all, but they give them a fair shake. But it's Marcus Edwards getting sporting the win and the land imperialization in the 83rd minute. Again, though, for sporting, they're going to get a goalkeeper and it's not anything to write home about. Brisbane Raw, we're headed to the A-League and the Raw are going to find themselves heading directly south, which means they're going to be trotting into Gosford here, trying to take down the Central Coast Mariners and come dog. Both these teams have had phenomenal series so far inside Australia. This would go a long way for the winner to imperializing Australia. It's the Mariners 
taking on the Raw. A lot on the line here. Who's going to get the victory? It is going to be the Central Coast Mariners. Backs against the wall, getting a huge result. So there's going to be a lot going across here. So all the players that the uh, Raw picked up, you got Davia, you got Marcelo from the Wanderers, you got Mikkel Tarze, however you pronounce it, I've, I've, I suck at pronunciating it. And we're going to have to go to the wheel. Hold on, let me do the spin. Yeah, it's going to be Jay O'Shea heading to the Central Coast Mariners as well. So the Mariners officially have all of New South Wales and all of Queensland. Also, I love how the person who made this Australia map, like I didn't blur out the words, had Queensland. Forgot the Q. What are you doing, bro? Sparta Praha. We're headed to the Czech Republic, a place that from memory is almost fully imperialized. So Sparta Praha will be heading west, which means they're going to be going out of the country. Let me pull this over. They're going to be going out. So they're trying to, uh, they're trying to get out of the Czech Republic. They're going to be going into Germany. Okay, bold move. Okay, so if you've got AUE over here, then I assume it's this little area here. Let me just confirm that. No, that's that little dipper there. So we're going to go further down. Then I think it's going to be Augsburg. Yeah, it's that little area there. So it's going to be Augsburg versus Praha. This, I honestly can't pick who I think is going to win this one. You've got the updated Crazy in there. You've got Stanek in goals for Sparta Praha. A few additions as well to the Augsburg side. Let's see. Who's moving into a different country? We go to a second leg. Again, this is one of those games where I could see it going to like a seventh leg, just like we had in Argentina before. And yeah, oh, it's so annoying. I'm so sick of draws. Third leg, what is it going to be? It's going to be a 3-1 win there for Sparta Praha. That is massive. They're going to get themselves Schindler. Hirota, the goalkeeper Drews, and another goalkeeper here in Gikovic, who's the highest rated Augsburg player. They took the hard route. They could have had a million and one upgrades, but instead Sparta Praha take over a large chunk of Germany. I mean, they might have made things a little bit more difficult for themselves, but right now they are basking in glory. Swansea City, we have not seen that name in a hot minute. Swansea is going to be heading east. Oh, that's going to be Cardiff City. That is going to be Cardiff City. And you know why this game is massive? Because whoever wins it is going to take the highest rated player, obviously, and they're going to have this whole area claimed as theirs, which will be two, four, six, eight overall to somebody else. Both teams with an upgraded striker. These are the only two remaining Welsh teams in this series. So this is the Battle of Wales. And it's a battle for the star strikers. Robinson versus Piro. Who is going to survive? This game is huge, lads. This game is huge. And it's going to be Swansea City taking out Welsh supremacy and now, oh my god, that means Swansea are going to get, pure, uh, sorry, Swansea are going to get Paul Mullen and Callum Robinson, 74 rated Robinson and 69 rated Paul Mullen. And because they take this area here from Cardiff City, they're going to get themselves a plus eight upgrade to Perot. So he's now going to find himself as an 83. That's actually mental from Swansea. And they're also going to get Norman from Newport. I forgot that he went to Cardiff. Godoy Cruz, we're heading to Argentina. They're going to be going east, almost southeast, but mainly east, which means they're just going to be taking on Tayerez here instead of getting an upgrade. It's Tayerez. Big one, this one. Tayerez have been doing bits on the field. Meanwhile, Godoy Cruz have the upgraded Ferrari here, who's going to continue their run. It's getting really tight here in Argentina. Tyres, stand and applaud. They, they are really impressing me. They are the standout team at the moment in Argentina. They're going to get themselves Ferrari. Leeds United. Okay, back to England we go. Leeds United heading northeast, which is going to see them taking on Middlesbrough. Both these teams with their fair share of results in this series so far. I'm genuinely curious to see how this one goes. Middlesbrough could pull it off. But obviously, I think my money's going to fall with Leeds United. But the scoreline at the Riverside Stadium is a win for Middlesbrough. That is massive. Michael Carrick's Middlesbrough have eliminated Leeds United. And if my memory serves me correct, that means they're going to get Sinistera. That is massive. Oh, it's either going to be Sinistera or Weston McKenney. All right, let's get the wheel out for this one. I don't normally show me doing the player selections, but this is what I do every time. But I think this one's pretty important that we should show it. Or oh, it's going to be Weston McKenney. Weston McKenney is going to be joining Middlesbrough's midfield. That is... I'm, I'm impressed. They're also going to get an upgraded goalkeeper here. Vaslik is joining them. And Anderson. And Smallwood. And the centre forward Ogbene. Middlesbrough with a bit of a haul there. Sorry. 
and close. Map's looking good here for Middlesbrough, but I mean, they're starting to get a little closer now to Liverpool, which I'm sure everybody wants to avoid. Torino, okay, Italy again. I feel like there's been a lot of Italian football today. Ooh, South, I know exactly what this means. Yeah, they've got Sampdoria. They've got Sampdoria here. Sampdoria have been a team possessed throughout this imperialism series. Another massive test for them here against a quality Torino side who took down, I believe it was Fiorentina last game out. Here we go, a massive game. And it is Sampdoria continuing their run, taking down Torino in the 89th minute. Are they the real deal? Sampdoria are gonna add Vlasic, wherever they are. Yeah, Nikola Vlasic and Dragovski, who they picked up previously. Another addition to their attack, which I don't know whether they necessarily need at this point. Also, I apologize. They got Dragovski from Spezia, not Fiorentina. There we go. I mean, Sampdoria really haven't got much land in Italy. They've got a lot elsewhere, but now they're starting to gather a little bit more. So it's going to be the German third division side, Rotterweiss Essen. And they're going to find themselves going southwest. Oh, okay. They're going to be taking on FC Utrecht. An opportunity here for Essen to either enter the Netherlands or for Utrecht to get more land here in Germany. This is like a huge banana peel game for, for uh, FC Utrecht, I should say. They've really got not much to gain from this. Are they gonna fall and stutter? Or, no, they're not. They're gonna survive and advance and imperialize Rot Weiss Essen. Jesus Christ, look how many 65 rated players there are. I mean, none of them are gonna make an addition here to the side. So I'm just gonna choose Gertz. I'm not even gonna bother going through the wheel for this one. Okay, headed to the MLS with a team that already has a win next to their name. It's Nashville. Nashville is gonna be heading Southeast, which is gonna see them narrowly avoid Atlanta United and take this state here which I think is South Carolina. And that's going to see their 79 rated center forward Mukhtar going up to an 81. That's a nice upgrade. Middlesbrough again. Oh, are they going to get unlucky and get Liverpool? They're going to be going left, which is the West. I didn't realize how close they were to Manchester City. I mean, they're going to avoid them as well. And are they going to, wait, are they going to be getting... Are they going to be getting Blackburn or are they going to be getting whoever this team is, Morecambe? Nah, it's going to be Blackburn because it was slightly, like, that's west there, but they were slightly south of it. So they're going to be getting Blackburn. Middlesbrough, surely still riding high after their big win against Leeds United, but Blackburn aren't a walk in the park here. This is going to be an interesting game. Can their new additions do anything? Yes, they do. It's their newest addition of all. Weston McKenney stepping up and delivering a winner here. For Middlesbrough in the 88th minute and their incredible run continues. And it's another massive addition here for them. They're doing it the best way possible, Middlesbrough. Just getting the best, like they're getting wins, not incredible wins. I mean, obviously that win against uh, Leeds was solid as, but they get Blackburn, but they get a 75 rated player out of it. Just brick by brick building a solid team here. They ought to be careful now though, because they are so close to Manchester City. Heading to France again, we've got Troyes. Troyes are gonna be heading north. East, which is going to see them take on Belgian side, Union saint Gallois. Union saint Gallois have been on an incredible run, but this is going to be a tough challenge here to continue their push through France. The scoreline is a 1-0 win here for Royal Union saint Gallois. They are just putting brick by brick as well. So saint Gallois are going to add Jeff Ray and Adelaide to the side, along with Zadadka and Cabal, they're really getting good. And as I said, they're gonna move further here into France. That is, that's surprising, but I'm welcoming it. That is insane. But lads, that is where we are gonna conclude this part of the Global Imperialism series. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Stay tuned for part six. It is gonna be a monster episode. The last two parts are gonna be huge. So be patient. They might take me a little while to get them done, but they're going to be crazy. Thanks for watching, lads. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe down below. I'll see you soon. It's been Jared HD here. I'm out.